Let's take a look at Joe Madden's lineup today for the Los Angeles Angels. Some pretty big names in there, J.D., as you look at uh, Mike Trout and Albert Pujols down in the sixth spot. But Jared Walsh, seventh in Rookie of the Year voting a year ago. This guy drove in 26 runs in just 32 games in 2020. That lineup is brought to you by Ford. And the man to uh, deal with that lineup this afternoon is Trevor Williams. He's our starting pitcher. It's brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. And we'll shine a spotlight on Trevor Williams, what he likes to do when he's out there. Fastball, both a four-seamer and a sinker. He's just a touch below league average at 91 miles per hour. Slider has been a point of emphasis for Trevor this spring. Changeup and curveball. So he's got the four basic pitches. Two and eight last year with a 6.18 ERA as a member of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Defensively, the Cubs brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield through it all. And, yeah, a lot of the mainstays in there for the Cubs and the Angels here this afternoon. Peterson gets left, half is in center. Jason Hayward patrols right field on the dirt. We'll go around the horn. KB, Javi, David Bodie, Anthony Rizzo, third to first. P.J. Higgins does the catching this afternoon. Trevor Williams on the mound for the Cubs with the Pirates a year ago. He did struggle. Made 11 starts, put together a record of 2 and 8, and his ERA was just a shade over 6. The Angels coming up with David Fletcher to lead things off. Perfect day for a game. It's going to be a high of about 70 today. Everyone should be able to get in all the work they need. Bryant even with the bag and the first pitch on the way is in there for a call strike and away we go Jerry Davis calling balls and strikes the base umpires today Adrian Johnson Pat Holberg and Kyle McCready the 0 1 lifted into the air into right shallow and playable for the oncoming Hayward and that's out number one. Take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by your local uh, Hyundai dealer. And we've been uh, sharing some quotes with you so far this spring. And they've mostly been kind of romantic, talking about the, the beauty of the game and the desire to go to spring training and have fun. Today's key has a little bit of a different point of view. And we'll get to that eventually. Uh, I just want to tease that. We're going we're gonna to tease the keys. <laughs> so you're going to want to stay put. Mike Trout. One of the best players in the game and has been for a long time. He'll take a strike. Trout last season. For the Angels as he waits for the 0 1 pitch. And it's on the way. It's in there for a call strike. Good breaking ball. But Trout does a lot of things that can help you win games. He's got great power. He had 17 homers a year ago. Great defensive player. Great runner. He can throw. He can do it all. Yeah, big, strong man, just a tremendous athlete. He's been in the league a long time now. We, we, we don't see a whole lot of the Angels. Kind of glad he made the trip. I don't know if Trevor Williams would share that sentiment. I mean, <laughs> you never really want to deal with a guy like Trout. He's in his 11th year in the big leagues. And, J.D., he's averaged about 30 homers and 80 RBIs per year. Takes the low and outside. It's even. Three times he's been the league MVP. Twice he's been the MVP of the All-Star game. Yeah, and you could argue he probably could have a couple more MVP awards on his mantle as well. He's been that good. Good high fastball gets him swinging, and that's out number two. Well, let's uh, circle back and talk about our keys to the game. As I mentioned, most of our quotes have been positive, but this one from the Hall of Famer Jim Palmer. I hate the cursed Oriole fundamentals. I've been doing them since 1964. I do them in my sleep. I hate spring training. <laughs> Baseball fever. Tell Catch us, it. Tell us what you really think, Jim. <laughs> Two outs. Here's Jared Walsh. The left-handed batter wraps it foul. I like that high fastball, though, that Williams threw to Trout to get him. Yeah, if, if Trout has a hole, that's it. You, you don't want to live down, you know, mid thighish or just above the knees. He's really good down there. You can elevate and get him to chase. Walsh in just 32 games a year ago drove in 26. You got to like that ratio of run productivity. The Angels had a long year last season. They were 26 and 34. 
They were not a contender. They finished 10 games out of first place and did not make the playoffs. They have not been in the playoffs now for six consecutive years. Yeah, three consecutive fourth place finishes finishes for the Halos. A 2-1 from Trevor Williams. And that'll even it up 2-2. Two -two. What's on your mind on the 2-2 two -two pitch? You know, I, I think, again, it's, it's just a matter of what he knows about this hitter, what he's trying to accomplish. I think the one thing about Trevor Williams being a guy who doesn't throw 95 miles per hour, and you saw it a little bit when we looked at his arsenal, uh, you just don't want to be predictable. You don't want to fall into patterns where you throw the same thing on the same count. The 2-2 two -two jammed him, pop up, shallow left, going to fall in for a base hit. Made a good pitch. But it's a single opposite field for Walsh. And it brings up Anthony Rendon. Yeah, uh, offensively, the Angels were a good club. Uh, fourth in the league and run scored last year, but the pitching was not good. Starters next to last in Major League Baseball, the ERA of 552. The bullpen was a little bit better, but nothing to write home about. So they've addressed that. They've, they've added uh, Jose Quintana, Alex Cobb. To the rotation. Isel Iglesias will be the closer. Rendon pulls it foul down the line and left. Former Washington National was part of their World Series championship club a couple of years ago. This is a good ball player. This is a really good ball player, an underrated ball player, one of the best in the business. Nicknamed Tony Two Bags when he was with the Nats. He almost looks so relaxed at the plate, J.D. It seems like he never lunges. He's rarely off balance. Paul Molitor comes to mind. Just real simple approach, quick hands. No score, just underway. Two down top of the first. Walsh being held by Rizzo over on the right side. But the eighth year of beautiful Sloan Park here in Mesa. And it really is a gorgeous facility. All kinds of practice fields, workout equipment galore. It's hard to imagine a nicer spring training facility than Sloan Park. And the Nike Performance Center. Little gap in left center for Rendon. Cub right-hander Trevor Williams set and fires. Rolling away, blocked out of the dust nicely by Higgins. Trevor Williams, a 14-game winner as recently as 2018 with the Pirates. That was his career high. He went to college in nearby Tempe, Arizona at ASU. Signed by Miami and then went over to the Pirates in a trade before being signed as a free agent by the Cubs this past offseason. The one two. Stroke foul down the line and left. Somebody made a play. That guy right there brought his glove and it paid off. Yeah, this is a, good, a tough guy to, to finish off. Uh, Rendon, he, he walks more than he strikes out. There's only a handful of guys in the game you can say that about. You really have to execute pitches to beat him. Short lead by Walsh. The one-two is down low. Just, he tracks the ball so well, and uh, again, those quick hands allow him to wait back a little bit longer, perhaps, than others. No, he never looks uptight or nervous. He's just nice and calm and relaxed at the plate. Anthony Rendon. The next pitch pulled on the ground of the hole. Nice play by Bryant. Gets up and throws him out. No runs on a hit. A man left. Angels do not score with. Ground ball to third. 
Toro is there. His throw in time. Justin Verlander, his third career no The DH in the number eight spot, Nick Martini, a late minute replacement in that starting lineup. Nico Horner was going to be in there, but we understand some lower back stiffness has uh, forced him out of the lineup today. Certainly hope that's nothing serious. Dylan Bundy, the right-hander, delivering to Hap, drives one in the air, opposite field, deep toward the track, and playable for Upton for out number one. Dylan Bundy is the starting pitcher for the uh, Angels this afternoon, brought to you by Budweiser. The former first-round pick, his second year in an Angel uniform, really mixes it up. He used to be a guy who could really blow. He'd go up 96, 97 miles per hour. You don't see a whole lot of that from him these days, but he really knows how to mix it up. To the tune of a 6-3 and three record in a 3.29 ERA last season in 11 starts. Spent many years with Baltimore, started his big league career in 2012. As Jock Peterson will take a fastball at the knees for a strike. Bundy lifetime 44 up and 48 down. The Angels thinking of him starting today for them. Peterson fouls it back. It's 0-2. The starting pitching for the Angels was just dreadful a year ago. Angels starting staff collectively their starters had an ERA of 5.52 second to last in the big leagues and that is something that will make for a very long season. The 0 2. Hey. Speed pitch popped up foul J.D. and out of play. Yeah, Even in a 60 game season right it could be a long yeah. season if you give up runs at that clip. Well, it's tough on everybody. It's tough on your manager, for one, it's, and that's Joe Madden. But it's tough on the everyday players who constantly find themselves down two or three or four runs early in games. You're going to come back to win a percentage of those games, but certainly not all of them. Peterson has been the hottest Cub in Cactus League play. Five homers already and hitting 579. He's driven in nine. He's had an opposite field homer or two. Fouls it away. A couple days ago, he had a bunt single against the shift and then ripped a double into the left field corner, or the right field corner, excuse me, his next time up. Bundy, though, really the one bright light in their rotation last year, posting that 329 ERA. Off speed pitch away two and two now to Jock Peterson. Shohei Otani will be back in the rotation for the Angels this year. They figured to go with a six man rotation at least for a time. Pulled onto the ground into the shift on the right side and that will be out number three. Or out number two, I should say, as Chris Bryant comes up. JD? Let's set the uh, defense for the Angels, and it's brought to you by Popeyes. There's the outfield alignment Upton, Trout, and Fowler, veterans left, center, and right for the Angels these days. Mendon Iglesias, uh, Andrelton Simmons is gone. Iglesias signed to take over at Short Fletcher and Walsh on the right side. Max Stassi does the catching here this afternoon. Bryant looking for his first home run of the Cactus League. He has driven in three. It's a big looping curveball inside. Comes with seven wins, five losses in the Cactus League. There's a high fly ball in the right center. Should be routine for Trout. It is, and it's a one, two, three inning. So neither team scores in the first. It's on to the second inning we go. Hi. Along with Jim Deshays, Pat Hughes at beautiful Sloan Park in Mesa. No score. First pitch fastball swung on and miss. Upton will be followed by Albert Pujols and Dexter Fowler. Good sinking fastball gets it in there for 0 and 2. 
Yeah, the last couple of years, the numbers have taken a pretty steep dive for Justin Upton, who's had a really good big league career, over 300 career home runs. But there's a, a lot of swing and miss in his game these days. He's always been a guy who struck out a, a good amount. He hit 204 a year ago, did have nine home runs. A one two from Trevor Williams. Breaking ball just missed. That would be a tough pitch to lay off of, I would think. I bet, I bet a lot of guys would have swung at that mm -hmm. one. That's a good pitch. That, that, and that's the, the slider is the, the one pitch they've been trying to tweak with Trevor. A little chopper to a slow, uh, to a charging Bryant. And the throw to first scooped out by Rizzo, but not in time. A little chopper by Upton. He beats it out for the infield single. Angels have the leadoff man on in a scoreless game. The Angels had a busy offseason. Peter Manasian, their new general manager, acquiring guys like Alex Cobb for the rotation. A couple of former Cubs are in there. You see Dexter Fowler and Jose Quintana. They had their shortstop, Andrelton Simmons, leave as a free agent and go to Minnesota. So Jose Iglesias will play short now for them. And Rysel Iglesias, the former Reds closer, is part of their bullpen, Jim. They were busy. Hey, yeah, they've cornered the market on Iglesias. This, this, this. <laughs> Maybe they can get Julio to sing the anthem or Enrique or somebody. <laughs> Iglesiai, I guess, mm -hmm. would be the plural. Here's Albert Pujols, 41 years old in the final year of that massive 10-year contract that he signed. Hit 224 a year ago. Here's a slow roller. Could be two. Baez to Bodie one. He turns it. That's a double play. And he beat me to the punch. I was going to say that Albert Pujols has hit into more double plays than any big leaguer in history. 399 times he's bounced into a twin killing. Yeah, well, he's been at it a long, long time, and he doesn't run. I mean, he... You know, he used to be a pretty decent base runner. He's never been a fast guy, and now he's the slowest guy in the game. He's had a lot of leg and feet heel issues over the years. He, even on a slow ground ball like that, it turns into an easy double play. Two down, here's Dexter Fowler. Came over from the Cardinals in an offseason transaction. <laughs> Dexter batting seventh in Joe Madden's order. Of course, he hit leadoff for the Cubs in the World Championship year of 2016. Getting back to Pujols and the double plays, it's not necessarily a bad thing for your career, J.D., to be in the top five. After Pujols on the all-time list of grounding in to double plays, you've got Cal Ripken Jr., Henry Aaron, Ivan Rodriguez, and Carl Yastrzemski. Yeah, and they all played, what, 20-plus years in yeah. the big leagues. It's mm -hmm. kind of just a function of uh, sticking around a long, long while. Williams to Fowler. Fisted in the air. Foul, and this ball is going to be out of play. Two down, nobody on, no score, second inning, and the one-two. Breaking ball just missed. Williams thought he had him. Yeah, he was doing the lean. He was ready to head off the field. Dallas always had a very discerning eye. Backdoor slider. Flip mm. a coin. Could have gone either way. The two-two lifted into shallow left. Baez battling the sun. He'll slap the leather on it to end the inning. Despite a leadoff single by Upton, the Angels walk away empty-handed. No, it's not mine. No, I'm just, I'm just, like many other things, I'm just riding the wave. Anthony Rizzo leads off the bottom of the second and takes a strike. Rizzo hitting 313, looking strong so far in the Cactus League. A couple of long home runs. He'll be followed by Baez and Hayward against Dylan Bundy. Ooh, nice let up. It's interesting. So Bundy, the number four overall pick in the 2011 draft out of uh, 
High School in Oklahoma with that big fastball. He's had some injury issues, so doesn't throw that hard anymore. Actually, below major league average, but he's learned how to pitch. He knows how to mix it up. Rizzo out on strikes, and that's out number one. Again, the Cubs playing game number 14 of the Cactus League, halfway through. All players will tell you they like to have about 40 to 50 plate appearances if possible. It's not always possible to have quite that many for every guy. But an everyday player, they like to have at least 40 under their belt before the gates open on opening day. Just to feel like their timing is where they want it to be and they've seen enough pitches. And yeah, and um, it, it's interesting because it'll vary from player to player. We talking with Jason Hayward the other day and he kind of implied that he was ready to go. But now. First ball strike to Baez evens up the count. How about as a pitcher what would you like to do at the end of spring training for your last outing. How far would you want to go. Well usually it was the second to last one. We, oh boy. Baez slugs one deep down the line and left curling and going foul. I think you know the formula now is to, to push it. The, your second to last spring training outing and then maybe back off your final outing before your first regular season assignment and I, I think that makes sense um, you know, get up to 90 pitches or so and then in that final outing maybe 75 pitches Baez pops one up foul playable right side Walsh coming over near the Cubs or the uh, Angels dugout I should say and that's going to be out number two Scoreless game. The Cubs have not had anyone reach so far against Dylan Bundy. Going back many, many years, though, JD, I can recall spring training games where starting pitchers like yourself at the end of camp, there would be a guy pitching all nine, a complete game. Yeah. And he would say, okay, I'm ready to go now. Yeah. Well, complete games don't even happen in the regular season anymore. <laughs> That's right. The manager let a, a pitcher go nine in an exhibition game. He would be fired. Yeah, that's right. Here is Jason Hayward taking high for a ball. You don't see a lot of collisions with base runners and fielders in Cactus League games. You don't like to see even a lot of guys uh, sliding head first into bases. It's it's going to happen occasionally. Yeah, I've, I've uh, talked to managers over the years, and I've always pressed my case that guys should play a little more conservatively in spring training. I've a lot of managers and a lot of players have told me I just can't do it. And once I get out there and I start to compete I play the way I always play and that's that was the point Joe Madden I, I raised it with Joe because Joe was a very progressive thinker and I thought maybe he would come at it from a different angle than a lot of other baseball people. And he said no I want my guys playing in March like they do in August. But man uh, headlong into a wall I don't think that's a good idea. Here it lines one toward right deep and back and making the catches Dexter Fowler to end the inning hard hit ball but right at him we go to the third Cubs nothing Angels nothing hammers this ball to left and that's going to be number 40 as we come back to live action and Trevor Williams faces Max Stassi the thing I love about that play is though JD that's that's Javier Baez his mind works so quickly. He saw the throw. He knew it was on the money. He knew he was going to catch it. He saw where the runner was. He knew he was going to tag him out. So the ball is halfway to him. He's already registered an out and starting to congratulate his teammates. Yeah, yeah, pointing in at uh, at Molina. I also wonder why Nelson Cruz was running in that situation, but I guess that's beside the point with <laughs> Adrian Beltre up there. But yeah, so much, you know, Baez. He's the whole package, including the entertainment part of it. He's so much fun to watch play. Have you ever seen a better tagger though than Javier Baez? We never even talked about tagging until right. Javi came along. All of a sudden people started rating people's tagging ability. But no, I have not. Stassi the batter. He'll be followed by Jose Iglesias and then David Fletcher. Trevor Williams I was reading about a game that he pitched for the Pirates four seasons ago, August of 2017. He was hooked up with Rich Hill of the Dodgers in a night game at PNC Park in Pennsylvania. 
Bouncer tore the middle. Baez with a play. Gets up, spins, and throws to first. And it's not in time. The ball low. Rizzo could not dig it out cleanly. Baez actually had a little more time to make the throw than he realized, and he bounced the throw, but a dazzling effort nonetheless. Yeah, right on cue after talking about Javi and his defensive wizardry. Almost pulls another rabbit out of his hat here. Great quick hands to snare it. Normally, Anthony's going to bail him out on the other end and pick that one for him. A little bit of an in-between hop. It's going to probably be a leadoff single, I would think, for Stassi as Jose Iglesias bats. Gets jammed and fouls it away. But the uh, game between the Dodgers and Pirates back in August of 17 you talk about a great pitchers duel Rich Hill took a perfect game into the bottom of the ninth inning Trevor Williams pitched eight shutout innings to keep the game nothing nothing finally in the bottom of the ninth inning Hill would allow a base runner on an error by Dodger third baseman Logan Forsythe on a ball hit by Jordy Mercer of the Buckos. And Trevor Williams had checked out of the game so he had no decision but he pitched great ball eight shutout innings Rich Hill you talk about tough losses J.D. He still had a no hitter going going into the bottom of the tenth inning when Josh Harrison hit the first pitch for a home run and a walk off one nothing win for the Buckos in a tremendous pitchers duel. Yeah. <laughs> Spot on it's horrible luck for. Rich Hill, Rick Mountain. Josh Harrison became the first man ever to break up a no hitter with a walk off home run. One to nothing in 10 innings. It's always a shame when an error puts an end to a perfect game. As Williams will go to work now and the next offering on the way to Jose Iglesias outside. As I was reading about that I was thinking about the Harvey Haddock's game way way back in 1959. Left hander for the Pirates Harvey Haddock's had 12 perfect innings going. And finally an error by third baseman Don Hoke in the bottom of the 13th ended. The bid for perfection and then later Joe Adcock would hit one over the wall to end the ball game. Here's a chopper back to the mound. Williams goes to second. Turned by Bodie, and that will be a double play. One, four, three on the twin killing. Second double play in as many innings dialed up by Trevor Williams here. Square to home plate as he finishes. The key there, just don't panic. And he didn't. It wasn't a great feed to second base, but good enough to get the job done. Good work by Bodie. To sling it over to first in time. Cubs have turned a couple of double plays so far and now David Fletcher the batter. Fastball strike. But imagine two great outings by Trevor Williams and Rich Hill. One guy gets the loss the other guy gets a no decision. Baseball's not fair in that regard. You had to pitch some games where you thought how could I walk away with a loss. After that game. Yeah, sure. And, and, you know, conversely, there are times you go out there and stink it up and your team scores nine runs for you and you get a cheap win. But that one you deserve. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you never apologize for those. <laughs> Williams, the one two to David Fletcher. And even the count at two and two. Opening day, 18 days away, April 1st at Wrigley Field, the Cubs and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Six game homestand, Pittsburgh and Milwaukee in for three each. Go to Cubs.com for ticket info. A little lazy line drive handled easily by Rizzo. Angels have been stymied. Nothing, nothing game, middle of the third. Bottom of the order for the Cubs in the bottom of the third David Bodie Nick Martini and then P.J. Higgins. Cubs without a base runner so far against Dylan Bundy after two innings. Bodie hits a sky high pop fly playable shallow left. 
And the shortstop Iglesias <laughs> had to look away. Those eyes were starting to burn. Yeah, guys would rather have a screaming one hop at the shin semi line drive than, than a pop up on a day like today in Arizona. You just can't wait until that ball gets in your glove so you can look away. One away, here's Martini. A little bit wide for ball one. Reading some published reports earlier today, JD, about the, the baseball and the liveliness or the relative liveliness of the baseballs that Major League Baseball planned to use this year. Apparently, it's going to be a less lively ball than we've seen last year and the year before. Yeah, that's the plan to kind of den the ball just a little bit, try to cut down on home runs. We'll see where that takes the game. He's featured a very good change up here today, and a nice job by Nick Martini not biting. That's a strike three and one now on Martini. But it also said there would be an increase in the number of ballparks from five parks to ten, where they will store the baseballs in a humidor before the game to take some of the liveliness out of them. Yeah, uh, Colorado obviously has been doing that for a number of years. The Diamondbacks started it um, a couple, three years ago, I guess. They did a study around Major League Baseball trying to get uniformity around the game so the ball travels the same way in every ballpark. Chicago land native Nick Martini draws the leadoff walk. No score, third inning. One away, the batter, P.J. Higgins. Yeah, I saw somebody wrote a story comparing uh, the numbers of spring training with the new ball, but I talked to David Ross a few days ago, and he didn't think the new ball was in circulation yet. Little bender low and away to the right-handed batting Higgins. Again, there will be no DH in the National League. Pitchers will bat for themselves. Swing and a foul. Because there are still so many guys in camp, though, most teams, including the Cubs uh, and the Angels for that matter, they've got DHs going today. But at some point, Jim, you're getting close to two weeks before opening day. Some of the Cub pitchers are going to have to get some at bats before the season, aren't they? I would think uh, for the starting pitchers, they would hit in their last start for sure, maybe the last two starts that they make. This ball is fouled away. I was thinking about that the other day when Jake Arrieta was pitching for the Cubs. Jake uh, was always a very good hitter. I remember a booming home run he hit in Arizona back in about 2016. He went about 450 feet. The pitchers will be batting in the National League. So let it be written, so let it be done. Curve in the dirt, running and taking second is Martini. Pitch taken by Higgins. Sometimes I see a play like that and you wonder, was the hit and run in effect? But the batter saw the ball was way out of the zone, so he just let it go. Let's see if Martini, or rather uh, Higgins, can drive in Martini with the first run of the game. A 2 2. Lifted to right. Pretty well hit. Back is Fowler near the edge of the track. Gloves it. Motoring to third after the grab is Martini. And now there are two down. Billy Harris is the new third base coach for the Cubs this year. Thank you. 
Ian Happ drove the ball a long way to the opposite field but fly to the warning track and left his first time. Ball strike to Ian Happ. Ian thought it was a little bit low. He might have had a word or two with home plate umpire Jerry Davis. You don't see big arguments in the spring. Save those for when the bell rings. Yeah, well, I remember years ago doing a game with the Astros, um, and Luis Gonzalez got ejected. I want to say Jeff Kellogg was the umpire, arguing balls and strikes. Well, that's something you don't see every day. A grapefruit League ejection. Hap hits a sharp ground ball of the shortstop Iglesias off balance throw to first one hop in time to get Hap to end the inning. Cubs don't score leave a man 90 feet away still nothing nothing game. For 300 the 16th man ever to hit one before the age of 30. It came against the Houston Astros in a game in Anaheim. Look at that off opposite field drive way up into the seats for the muscular Mike Trout. Scoreless game. Williams pitching well for the Cubs. Bundy mowing down the Cubs. Williams trying to win one of those starting spots in the rotation. The cop when Trout first came into the league was Mickey Mantle. And uh, mm -hmm. he's not disappointed. Probably at the end of the day will be will end up having a better career than the Mick. Williams pitch lifted into left center battling a tough son is Hap does he see it yes he does nicely done put that glove up to block out the sun and did not take his eyes off that ball to give you an idea of what Mike uh, Trout has accomplished in this game through his 28th season age 28 season his wins above replacement uh, bested only by <laughs> two of the all time greats Ty Cobb and Rogers Hornsby. Anytime you're on a graphic with guys in black and white, you know you've accomplished something. <laughs> One down, nobody on. Jared Walsh taking outside. Still like to watch the old black and white footage of some of the ball players from a century ago. Of on the old video, is there anybody that you really wish you could have seen them play live? Oh, you know, guys like Satchel Page. Yes. Right? Um, Joe DiMaggio. DiMaggio, for sure. Fastball high for Trevor Williams. Yeah, Ruth. I mean, any of those guys. Mm -hmm. Ty Cobb, he probably put on a pretty good yep. show on a very regular basis. Well, it's, it's interesting because in some ways, Baseball is trying to turn the clock back a little bit to get back to a game that was less power driven, less about strikeouts and you know, walks and strikeouts and balls in play. And you think about going all the way back to the dead ball era in the early 1900s, that's how the game was played. And the, uh, you know, the same ball would be in play the whole game. You'd beat the tar out of it. Uh, slapping the ball around the diamond, running, taking extra bases was, was the way the game was played. Ruth revolutionized the game with the power. Uh, but I think that's what MLB is trying to do get back to a game that you know, they're not going to turn back the clock to the dead ball era but maybe something that looks a little bit more like baseball in the 80s perhaps. You mentioned the DH uh, speaking of modern trends JD what do you think of the DH do you like it do you wish it was in both leagues or do you not like it? I don't like it uh, I've never liked it uh, I don't have a problem with it staying in the American League I like the argument. Because people like to argue about sports, and it's, it's been an argument between the two leagues since it came in. Most people seem to feel like it's going to come to the National League. Most fans that I hear from um, kind of bought into that. Not all. The argument of you know, 
plenty of arguments on both sides. The, the one I hear all the time is I'm tired. I don't want to see hit pitchers hit because they can't hit. And I understand that argument. Why do you say that Jim. Here's a ground ball to the right side fielded by Baez as the Cubs shift. And the bouncer right into the picket fence and that is going to be the second out scoreless game fourth inning and it brings up Anthony Rendon. Yeah I just for me I understand that argument but I, but the fact that there are some that can I think that I find that interesting. Uh, when Travis Wood was here and Joe would stick him in left field and bring him back into pitch. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was fun. Uh, Bartolo Colon hitting that home run three four years ago whenever that was. I thought that was a great story. That'll all go away obviously there's a DH in both leagues. Pitching change no score excellent two thirds innings he allowed three hits. But they were all pretty much soft uh, a little flare a little ground ball knock. They got two double play balls that's going to be a big part of the equation for the Cubs this year. They got a lot of pitchers will put the ball in play they'll lean heavily on that infield defense. That's precisely what Trevor did here this afternoon three and two thirds three hits no runs no walks and one strikeout that was Mike Trout back in the first. Trevor McGill the new man on the mound. Base is empty two down fourth inning but uh, a solid outing by Trevor Williams he threw a lot of strikes and had real good command today J.D. Yeah spot on Oop. Get out of that kitchen. Rendon bounced out to Bryant at third his first time. And Trevor Williams making a strong bid today to stay right in that uh, rotation picture. And this is about the time when you do not have a guaranteed spot on the team or on the roster. This is about the time when your performances every time out become very significant. Rendon driving one foul a little late on a good fastball by Trevor McGill. McGill has looked good this spring. He's in camp as a non roster invite. Big right hander that the Cubs took in the Rule 5 draft. Winner of 19 from the Padres. That's a whole lot of right hander out there. 6'8, 250. Payoff pitch to Anthony Rendon. He hits one high in the air to left field, deep in the corner, chasing it. Jock Peterson back toward the wall, and that ball will bounce for a ground rule double. He hit right in front of the barrier and jumped up into the bullpen area. It's a double that was lost in the sun by Jock Peterson. <laughs> yeah, that's no fun. We talk all the time about the the sky in Arizona and uh, drunk uncle got a hold of the joystick here. And he's driving Jock all over the place. Where is that baby? <laughs> oh come on. Nope. Oh no help from the boys in the bullpen. Can't catch what you can't see. Mm. And no one says sure I'll take the double. Thank you. First hit. We're him today. Two down a man at second and the batter now Justin Upton. The way Rendon paused I thought he thought it might have been a home run. Yeah I could tell. Hit it. Yeah. I don't know if that first bounce was in the bullpen or in front of it. A sharp smash on the ground, but scooped up cleanly by David Bodie. And the inning comes to an end. Angels don't score. Wednesday night, the San Diego Padres take on the Chicago Cubs at Sloan Park. It's always good to mix in some night games, I've always thought, Jim, and exhibition play to kind of get your body clock. Great five part of their world. Because you're going to play a lot of night games in the regular season. You might as well get used to when do you have your pre down the line and when do you get to the ballpark. There's a ground ball through the ship here in the left field. field. That's a big hit. facility. A right hand on the other side of the ship. More Recently, his career hard. The pirate. Houston continues to swing that hot bat. Carried a 579. Blocked out of the dust. Nice and clean. This ball game. All down the line. Guy right there. Yeah. Brought his glove. Uh, a couple sprints ago, we played a few extra left. night games. Or some of the clubs made a point of emphasis. 
to play a number of Early, night games the final nice week of 10 days of spring training. The... Get acclimated, the get ready for all the night no games on the regular man. season. Nope. Lead off base hit for Peterson. Here is Bryant taking a look at a toss to first. Bryant fly to center his first time. Angels do not score. No runs on a hit of man left. Pumps line up against the off speed pitch misses low and inside. And the key pitch for Bundy if you throw that curveball for a strike that opens up a lot of nothing possibilities for him. It's kind of a free strike. Most guys don't go, go up there looking breaking ball. Oh oh. Good afternoon, Brad. You could argue really that they probably should a little more often. Oh, ball at the knees for a strike. The Angels. Hard to do that though when you're in a league where there's a whole bunch of guys throwing 98 miles Point per hour. Five two. Well, it's tough on themselves. To Go yet up. Shohei Otani. Let's up the uh, round and Bundy shift nearing on the, right the end side. of his day of work. You would think 42 go with pitches. The, six the two out of Bryant. At least for a tie. Yeah. Six and now man. it's three and zero. Oh. Let's see if Chris gets something to hammer on three and zero. Oh. He might. You're right. Or out of the two, I should say. Let's up the uh, defense. Deep. Left set. Third flush on the. Peterson held by Walsh at first. Bundy to Bryant. It's a high fly ball in the right and center should be routine. Peterson for gets hung up. He took off. It is. And they got him in a rundown between with first and second. And they tag him out. Didn't expect that on 3-0 count. He scores in the first. Sano to the bag. There's no. Wobble. I'm not sure what the, the thinking was there. Oh, oh but it's strikeout. Upton. Leading off his even if you know if the idea is you're going to try to go on first move or anticipate first move to steal second base. That's when that happens. That's when the guy gets caught off like that. You're anticipating. You think you have a pitcher time when he comes set and when he's delivering. But three and zero oh would not be the count to do that. Bryant hits this one in the air to left center. Playable for Trout coming in and makes a running catch. And that's out number two. Beautiful sunny day in Arizona. Topping out at about 70 degrees today. Just a gentle breeze blowing out toward right. The bright sun. We've seen fielders struggling with a couple of plays already. Rizzo struck out his first time. Two outs, nobody on. This is when you see the guys with power take a big swing, usually. Were you a little more cautious pitching with two outs and a slugger up there, knowing that he just might be trying to hit a long ball? You, know, you try to stay aggressive. You don't. You know. You don't. You don't want to get timid and, and end up walking somebody to set up a potential big inning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's depending on the nature of the hitter. The most dangerous hitters. You're always trying to work edges. At least I was. I rarely wanted to give in. And we're seeing that more and more now. It's kind of ironic that there's more velocity in the game than ever, but fewer fastballs than ever. Pity the poor hitter who can't even sit on a heater when it's three balls and one strike. Two and two Rizzo chokes up ever so slightly on the pit. Change up got him. Cubs don't score. We have played four great pitching today. Nothing nothing game We're here in the fifth. I was got him at the trade deadline from the Diamondbacks last year. He was hurt at the time at a finger issue. If memory serves me right. We're all 15 appearances in a high ERA but he's been a pretty dependable reliever. Who holds lines one into right center. That's a base hit. And Jason Hayward will toss it back in. Albert Pujols way up there on the all time home run list with 662. He passed the legendary Willie Mays with this home run last September number 661. 
He would crack another winner in that same game, but any time you surpass a legend like Willie Mays in home runs, that's a pretty good night to have. Fowler hits a fly ball, batting right-handed to the opposite field and right. Backpedaling and gloving it as Hayward. And that's out number one. Does Albert rank all time on the long ball? Well, he's number five. Bonds, Aaron, Ruth, Rodriguez, and Pujols. Pujols 661st came against Wes Benjamin, a right-hander for the Texas Rangers. Still nothing, nothing game here in Mesa. Max Stassi, the batter, facing Andrew Chafin. Albert is third on the all-time runs batted in list. He's done a lot of damage against the Cubs over the years. Of course, all those years with the Cardinals. 2,100 RBIs, J.D. How about uh, 14 seasons of 100 or more? Think how many guys would love to do that one time in their career. Yeah, and, you know, it, it didn't take him long, right? When he first, he first came to the big leagues and, and he took off, there was... Really no breaking in period for Pools. He was a star from the jump. Again, he's in the final year of that gigantic 10 year contract that he signed with the Angels after leaving the Cardinals. It brings to mind, JD, the uh, trend here lately for younger players has been to sign those real long contracts. And I guess uh, Bryce Harper's 13 year deal with the Phillies. Jumps out. Christian Yelich signed, I think, a nine year extension by Milwaukee. Mookie Betts, I think, 10 or 11 years with the Dodgers. And just a few weeks ago, Fernando Tatis, Jr. of San Diego, signed an enormous contract. Now, is this, is this a wave of the future? Is this a current trend that we'll see how it works out? What do you think? Well, no, I, I think clubs are going to work really hard to identify that player, the franchise player, and, and lock him up so they have some cost certainty. Backdoor curveball gets him looking out number one. I, I don't think it's a trend in that there's going to be a lot of guys who get those contracts, but if you can identify somebody with the star power of a guy like Tatis, maybe we'll, you know, we'll see a handful more of them. Mike Trout's working on a 12-year deal now. With the elevated slider catches the top of the zone from the sheriff. Juan Soto's name has been brought up by Washington to try to get him to sign a long-term deal. Two down, a man at first, no score, fifth inning. Jose Iglesias bounced into a double play his first time and he takes outside. Keep reading about the potential free agents for the Cubs, namely Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, and Javier Baez. Baez and Rizzo, in particular, in the last 48 hours, have both been quoted as saying, that they are optimistic about the current rate of negotiations between the Cubs and their agents. Fly ball, right field, pretty well hit. Back is Hayward near the wall, makes the catch. And the side comes to an end. Still, Sports Network. Scoreless game, bottom of inning number five. Javier Baez first up for the Cubs. Jason Hayward to follow, and then David Bodie against Dylan Bundy. Bundy stretching it out, working in his fifth inning. First guy that I've seen work into the fifth this spring for anybody. Yeah, he's an Iron Man here today, sitting right at 50 pitches now. toward the middle. That's going to be a base hit to center for Baez. Iglesias was pulled over toward the hole. You like to see the hustle of Baez racing around first just in case that ball would be bobbled. Well, two guys that were uh, at the top of the draft in 2011. Bundy was number four that year. Hobby went number 11. 
Yep, it's called playing the game. Play the whole game right there. Go hard in case there's an opportunity to take an extra base. So one of the best base runners in all of baseball is on. Nothing, nothing game. Bottom of the fifth. And Jason Hayward at the plate. Hayward lined out to right his first time. The curveball is outside. Ball one. This is a rare advantage for the uh, the hitters here this afternoon to get two plate appearances against the same pitcher. Doesn't happen that often in spring training. Until we get closer till the end. Mundy has made 52 pitches. Trevor Williams, the Cubs starter, left during the fourth inning of play, but he was sharp. There's a smash up the middle. It's going to be a double play, however, as Iglesias, the shortstop, gloved it, scampered over, stomped on the cushion, and fired to first to double up Hayward. Struggles last year posting that 581 ERA, but just 26 in the third innings. And that abbreviated season. He was a workhorse for them the year before. It's 72 times in 2019 and posted an ERA just under four. Good heater, mid 90s plus, curve and a change. Bodie gets jammed and fouls it away. Nothing in two on David. Got a great charades name, too. Buttry. You know. Which way would you go? Would you do tree? Would you go butt? Good question. I never really had pondered that before. <laughs> oh, and two on Bodie. Speaking of pondering, as Bodie swings and misses, and the inning comes to an end, we'll get into some more stuff when we come back. Nothing, nothing game. We go to the sixth inning here in Mesa. Number 300, Garrett Cole becomes the third pitcher in Astros history to strike out 300 in a season. Just three and a third innings of work. He's looked good so far this spring. David Fletcher leads off top of the order for the Angels in a scoreless game and the first pitch is in for a strike. David Fletcher swings and misses fewer times than anybody in the game. At least that was the case last year. All kinds of new data. It seems like uh, JD it comes out every year. Sometimes several new things per year. A different way to analyze the game for scouts and front office personnel. A new one I read about in the paper. There was a story on Jake Marisnik, and it said he has an acceleration burst average of 1.8 seconds. Here is a swing and a foul off to the left and out of play. But I had not yet heard the acceleration burst average. Yeah, yeah. Let me guess. I know he's it? really fast. <laughs> Is that something like getting a good jump, jump on a yeah, ball? Yeah, I think that's that's I mean, it measures jump. I'm not sure exactly. Um, you know, no, they they track foot speed, feet per second. So maybe it's at the the first x number of steps. So just by comparison, would you have any idea what your personal acceleration <laughs> first average would be? <laughs> um, what is his? At 1.8 seconds. Huh. I don't know if burst is even in my <laughs> in my world anymore. <laughs> Depends if there's a pizza waiting downstairs. It's probably a little quicker. <laughs> Scoreless game, sixth inning. Brothers to Fletcher outside. It's one and two. But baseball is not uh, the only sport that does that. It was. Watching an NBA game the other day, and they were talking about this guy presenting matchup problems. That means we don't have anyone who can guard mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. 
Curveball ripped to third on the ground, and that's going to be out number one. We've made some defensive changes now. Chris Bryant will lead the game. Jombroni is in at third. Trent Jombroni. Chafin gets the first out. No score. Sixth inning. Here's Mike Trout. Strike out and a fly out today for Trout. One strike out of the day recorded by Trevor Williams with an elevated fastball through by Trout. Angels were the World Series champions, their only world title back in 2002. It was a seven game thriller over the San Francisco Giants. Fastball up and away. Who was the winning pitcher, Jim? Little uh, trivia here for that uh, 2002 World Series. Who was the winning pitcher for the Angels in Game Seven? Game Seven, huh? Um, John Lackey. John Lackey, rookie John Lackey. Losing pitcher was Levon Hernandez of the Giants. World Series MVP Troy Gloss. Now in the batter's box, Trout will remind you a little bit of Troy Gloss. Big strong guy, upright stance. Brothers to Trout and this pitch is swung on and foul back. He does generate some bat speed, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Yeah, yep. He's not, he's not feeling for it. He turns it loose. Probably feels like he should have done a, a little more with that pitch. Nothing, nothing game. Getting late. Sixth inning of a seven inning game. And 2 2. I think he went. Did he go? Yes, he did. That's going to be strike three. A sharp slider fooled him. Did he did not swing? Oh my. And they checked down to first base and uh, the verdict came in no swing. I think they made the right call. What did you think? Yeah, I thought that last angle looked like no swing. I'm going to try the same pitch. They did, Jim, but this one is down low and it's ball four. Now, Trout is always a threat to run. And he's at first with one down. Scoreless game. Cup fans, share your opening day memories by sending us your picks, stories, and videos for a chance to be featured on Marquee Sports Network. Use the hashtag Cubs Opening Day. By sharing, you give us permission to use your content on the opening day broadcast. Nothing quite like it. Opening day at the ballpark. Jared Walsh, the batter, takes inside. It's 1 0 with Trout at first. Yeah, that's one of the days, really, a special day every year. Opening day of the baseball season, especially in a great old ballpark like Wrigley Field. It'd be wonderful to have fans back in the ballpark this season. Yeah, it, it will feel a little more special this year because of that. About a 20% allowability of fan capacity for the early part of the year, but if things go well, that could increase quickly. Not to put any numbers on it, but it could definitely be a situation where you're allowed a higher, much higher percentage than 20% very soon after opening day but things have to go well from the start mm -hmm. go to cubs.com for ticket info probably about 3500 in attendance here today in in the Mesa at Sloan Park 
Giants two and one on Walsh. Cubs.com a great resource too to get all your information about the protocols at the ballpark and entering the stadium tickless entry uh, pod seating masking of course is going to be the order of the day. Uh, make sure you, you go to the website bone up on all that before you come to the park. Walsh fouls it away and the count now is full at three and two. Will Trout be moving on this payoff pitch in a nothing nothing game with one away. What do you think? I think he will not be. Because of the lefty on the mound? Yeah. But they're a little more fearful of the strikeout throw out than they are the ground ball double play. He's measuring a pretty aggressive lead though. Not going. The pitch lifted to left. Pretty well hit deep back toward the warning track and making the catch is Jock Peterson for out number two. And it brings up Anthony Rendon. It's warm today, but not blazing hot the way you get some days in spring training. It's only about 70 degrees for a high today. Rendon has bounced out and wrapped out a double. Get a guy with extra base hit power at the plate. Great speed, Trout at first. No score, sixth inning. Both teams with records of seven, five, and one in Cactus League play. The team records are not uh, not really all that important. Sure, you want to win, but getting guys their work is the main thing. One and two, good curveball. What's on your mind here for the one-two pitch? Oh, again, it's Rendon. I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'd probably try to throw him a letter high fastball, but he'd probably hit it into the gap. Brothers likes that breaking ball, that back foot curveball, put away. He tried it a couple of times with Trout, couldn't get him to bite. Well, he got him to half bite on the first one. Talked about Rendon earlier and how accomplished a player he is, and I don't think people re realize how good he actually is. Since 2017, wins above replacement among position players. Only Trout and Betts better than Anthony Rendon. Quite a dynamic one two punch they have in Anaheim, and that's why they've acquired some pitching. They're paying a lot of money to Rendon and Trout. Uh, they need to win. It's reading something from Joe Madden, the manager of the Angels. Today he's got Trout batting second and Rendon fourth. Joe says in the regular season, I might very well hit them back to back. What would be the difference there from your standpoint as an opposing pitcher? Not, not much. I think that's probably more late game stuff with the three batter minimum rule for relief pitchers. Yeah. Rendon strikes out swinging on a good curveball by Rex Brother. Still a scoreless game. Errorless ball today. On a sad note back in January, former Angel, former big league broadcaster Don Sutton passed away at the age of 75 back on January 19. Nick Martini fouls it away from Ty Buttrey. Hall of Famer Don Sutton. But uh, I got to know him very well. I had known him since we both were in Milwaukee together, but he won his 300th game in a uniform of the California Angels, June 18, 1986. Martinez pops it up shallow left. And Iglesias will glove it easily enough. And here's the final out, striking out Gary Ward of the Texas Rangers for win number 300. Did you see him pitch live very often, Jim? Not very often, no. 
a little bit, but uh, yeah, wonderful guy. Always a great conversation uh, going to Atlanta when he was working with the Braves. That's his son, Darren, with a big bear hug. Darren is back in the broadcast booth for the Angels this year. He and Matt Vazversion will split time as the play-by-play -play guys. Don Sutton's just a methodical year in and year out consistent performer. Amazing durability when you really think about it. A curveball from Buttrey is a strike. E.J. Higgins flied to right his first time. No score. Bottom of the sixth inning. Sutton never spent a day on the disabled list, Jim. He made 756 consecutive starts. Third on the all time list of games started in the big leagues behind Cy Young and Nolan Ryan. And the 756 in a row is the all time record. 15 I, I, times he worked 225 innings or more in a season. 15 times. Yeah, and that, that, that durability record that nobody's going to come close to that, obviously. Higgins takes inside for a ball. He worked in the days when it was a four man rotation so he'd make right around 40 starts per year which in a sense makes that consecutive game string even more impressive. Put it this way Jim I was I was tinkering with some numbers if a young guy this year on opening day started stayed in the rotation didn't miss a start started 32 games as you do in a five man rotation 32 games per season. To equal what Sutton did, he would not be able to miss a start until after the All-Star break in the year 2044. <laughs> That's remarkable. Higgins gets the walk with one away. And here is Ian Happ. But never on the disabled list. Now, I was thinking of you when I read that. I thought... Every starting pitcher, you get to about the middle of August, if you've been part of the rotation all year, a lot of things have to be hurting in August. Back, shoulder, arm, just overall body, back, pitch inside to Ian Happ. Yeah, I think what happens with most pitchers is you go through peaks and valleys physically over the course of the season you get to, you know you make five or six starts you'll feel really good the innings will pile up you maybe have a couple outings where you throw a lot of pitches and that's where baseball has evolved where that doesn't happen as often and so you might get a little bit of a dead arm period and then you bounce back and you feel fresh again for a few starts and so it kind of swings that way and baseball has become much more in tune with workload for pitchers to try to maximize you know the number of starts that they are at their peak over the course of 30 to 34 starts. Scoreless game, bottom of the sixth inning. Higgins at first, Ian Happ batting for the Cubs with Jock Peterson on deck. Here's a Don Sutton trivia question. He pitched for five big league teams. Name four of them, JD. I'll name all five of them for you Dodgers, Astros, Brewers, Angels. Ooh, who am I missing? I'll name <laughs> four of them for you, Pat. <laughs> you did pretty well. Who am I missing? The Oakland okay, A's. That was going to be my guess. I just didn't have the guts to go out there. Here's the two one to half. Stroked on the ground to second. Fletcher to Iglesias one over to first. They double up half and end the inning. Four six three nothing nothing to the seventh we go. Cubs bullpen this season. 21 ball games last year in the ERA of 595, covering 19 and two-thirds innings. A lot of strikeouts, but too many walks for the former Red Sox. Justin Upton oh. looks at a hook for a call strike. One final thought on Don Sutton. He told me something way back when that still rings true today, Jim, and he said. As I was interviewing him in spring training one day, he said, well, things are going well. Things are going okay, but fouled away. He said, I've always used spring training as a purpose for two things. One, to get my body ready for the full season, and the other, to get my head ready for the season ahead. Can you relate to that? 
Yeah, I think all ball players can. You know, that's that's the beauty of spring training. It's kind of this kind of slow ramp up to the regular season. Good high heater from Workman. Upton chased it down. He goes one away in the seventh. And here is Albert Pujols, and in a spot like this, you know he's thinking long ball. It is a seven inning game today. Workman to Pujols. And that's a strike. Pujols in his last six seasons, only one time has he been above the average of 245. Still has power. Yeah, you know, and batting average obviously has been discounted to a great degree, but hitting 300 is still kind of a magic number for a hitter. And his career average is just a notch below 300 now, so. Highly unlikely that he'll be able to climb above it. That's a good hook. That's Workman's best weapon. So you combine that with the elevated fastball, and then because that's a pretty good challenge for a hitter. Right over the top, a good yacker. Workman has the distinction of, of having both a one in ten season and a ten and one season as a pitcher. Mm. Fastball just under the knees, evens up the count at two and two. One and ten season came back at 14 when he was primarily a starter with the Red Sox, posted a 5.17 ERA that year. Gradually moved to the bullpen, became a full-time reliever. Picked up 10 wins out of the bullpen in 2019 with a 188 ERA. That's the guy the Cubs hope shows up here in 2021. Hermosillo now in center field for the Cubs. Strumpf at second base. Jim Brody over at third. Lobaton now catching. Jose Lobaton. Who holds, pulls a curveball foul. It stays three and two. Austin Romine, who will be the backup catcher to Wilson Contreras this year, still out of action with a sprained knee. He's providing opportunities for. Lobaton and Higgins. DJ Higgins has been doing a good bit of catching here lately. Scoreless game, seventh inning, one down. Fastball away, and Pujols draws the walk. See if he runs for himself or if Joe Madden elects to put in a pinch runner. Fowler popped out and flied out. And now pinch runner I believe is coming in. Brandon Marsh pinch running at first. Fowler hits a drive into right. Coming in Hayward. Jason will make a diving catch. And that's out number two. Very nice play by Hayward. Kind of a humpback liner there. Not an easy read. With the five time gold glover. It's a nice break. I wonder what his burst speed was there, Pat. <laughs> 1.9. He has always gotten a great jump on balls. Hayward comes in on a ball about as well as any right fielder I think I've ever seen. How about you? I, I don't know. I mean, he's just a good one. I know that. Marsh at first a short lead workman's pitch. 
This ball is in there for a call strike on the outside corner. Jack Kruger batting for the Angels in this spot. So they'll need a new catcher in the bottom of the inning. Base hit through the vacated right side. Marsh will go to third. As the throw comes in, Marsh will hold at third. And the, Indi the Angels have men at first and third now in a nothing nothing game with two outs in the top of the seventh inning. We talked about Workman liking to work that fastball up in the zone, and Kruger spoils the party. I mean, you rarely see this anymore. That ball is neck high, and he gets on top of it and shoots it through the hole on the right side. Just missed the base runner, Marsh. You never saw it. So the Angels threatening here with two outs in the top of the seventh inning. Iglesias waits. Beautiful curve Ooh. drops in for a strike. Pinch hitting now is Frank. Workman's 0-1. Bullseye on the outside corner. Nothing in two. Put away pitch here for Portman. Could be that high fastball again or try to bounce the breaking ball and trust Lobatone to keep it in front if it's in the dirt. There was the pitch you just alluded to, Jim, the bender in the dirt. The tone right on cue, smothered it, kept it in front of him, taking second on the play. Kruger at second, Marsh at third. And now Workman's one, two. Curveball got him swinging strike three. The Angels leave a pair. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Nothing, nothing game. Anthony Rizzo due to bat third. I believe Jim Brony will hit second in the inning. We'll just wait and see. The Angel bullpen, one reason they acquired this guy is because a year ago their bullpen suffered a major league high 14 blown saves in 26 chances. Yeah, Iglesias has been a pretty dependable guy out of that Reds bullpen for the last handful of seasons. There's a lot of different looks, different arm angles. Jones had sharp breaking stuff as he misses low and inside. Peterson, the home run hitter, home run leader for the Cubs with five. Two balls and no strikes. Getting reports that we might be playing an extra inning today, regardless, so we'll see. have made some defensive changes here in the late innings. Peterson pulls around the there down the right field line. This is going to trickle all the way to the corner. Peterson with good wheels around second. He's thinking three. Here comes the relay throw and Peterson will be at second base and holding with two bases. And the look on his face says I should have gone for three. You don't want to make that first out at third base, but yeah, once the ball got loose, he probably could have gotten it there. Phil Gosselin in playing first base now for the Angels. It just gets caught in between there. The choppy footwork couldn't square up behind that. He looked like it scored right between his legs. The new right fielder is Lund, Shebler in center, and Ward in left. 
Cubs have the leadoff man at second. Ian Miller pinch running for Jock Peterson. Probably an error on Goslin, wouldn't you think, J.D.? I do, yeah. Should have been able to knock that one down. Good fastball in there for a strike. Hmm. I'm with you, Trent. Thought it was a little up and away. Yeah. Now, at the very least, Jim Brony would love to get that runner over to third. Scoreless game, bottom of the seventh, nobody out. One and two. Really need to put this ball in play. Yeah, with two strikes, this is where you've got to be willing to sacrifice and choke up a little bit. Use your hands, just try to make some solid contact. Swinging strike three, Jim Brony is gone. It's one of those things are easier to say than to do, and the veteran Iglesias got his man by hitting his spot. So the catcher calling for that high heater. That's why that hit Kruger had last in the top of the inning through the right side with that ball way up. Was, you just rarely see that anymore because just about every hitter has got that uppercut, get that low ball in the air, launch angle approach. Anthony will get on top of a high one from time to time. Change up strike at the knees. Rizzo struck out twice early against the starter Dylan Bundy. Scoreless game, bottom of the seventh inning. With one away, a man at second. Rizzo swings and fouls it. Now it's nothing and two. Guys have had some good battles over the years. Slide ball. Glacius has always loved that pitch. Anthony tried to hit that one to Amatuki. <laughs> and the pitch to Anthony up and away. I love to watch Rizzo in the two strike approach. Chokes up on the bat. He does not swing nearly as hard. It's a contact plan. We've actually seen him hit a couple of home runs in this two strike stance. I know he took one deep against Trevor Bauer a year ago in Cincinnati. Rizzo takes high for a ball. He just seems more in control when he has this two strike approach. Yeah, and, and he's one of the rare guys that does it. I mean, this this is old school baseball. Two strikes, choke up on the bat a little bit, cut down on the swing. Rizzo hits a ground ball left side, base hit left field. Miller around third, heading home. Here comes the throw to the plate. Miller will slide. He scores, and the Cubs lead one to nothing. Anthony Rizzo, an opposite field ground ball RBI single, and the Cubs have taken the lead here in Mesa. That would have been a walk-off base hit had we stuck to the original plan of playing a seven-inning ball game, <laughs> but it is merely a go-ahead RBI single. This is exactly what we were talking about with Anthony's approach at the plate, the ability to choke up, to quote-unquote get small, and make some positive contact. And Speedy Miller in with the first run of the ball game. A one nothing in the desert. That's a, that's a, this is a unicorn here. This this kind of a ball game. You don't see many of these. Un or an unearned run as Baez swings at a hook and doesn't get it. But when I watch Rizzo do that, JD, I, I many times think, why don't more hitters try that two strike approach? I don't know the answer to that because I've asked the same thing over and over again. Especially when you've had the results that Anthony has had. Mm -hmm. You'd think other players would say, you know what? He makes that look kind of easy. Not that it is, but maybe I can do that. Yeah, and, you know, and it may be, you know, 
guys will make subtle adjustments, maybe not choke up on the bat the way Anthony does, but maybe widen the stance a little bit and just think, be, be a little bit more protective. So sometimes it's, it's more subtle, it's nuanced. Where, you know, they, they're, they're changing their thinking a little bit without necessarily changing, you know, where they hold their hands on the bat. Rizzo, the RBI single, driving in the game's first run here in the seventh inning. That's it. Two down as Baez fans, and it brings up Jason Hayward. It's long been the narrative with Javi, right? Would he be able to be willing to or capable of changing his approach with two strikes? And you'll see him. He'll get into stretches where he will. He'll be a little more mindful of hitting the ball to the right side, trying to be a little quicker. I remember working with the late Ron Santo for 15 years on Cubs Radio Jim and he talked about uh, his two strike approach. He wouldn't choke up necessarily but he would definitely shorten the swing. Mm -hmm. And he said it's amazing even though you're not taking your normal big slugger swing you can still generate almost the same amount of power. Yeah we see it all the time guys that are up there and, and you know where a single will get the job done. And just quick and short to the ball and still drive it out of the ballpark. And these guys are so big and strong. Cubs have broken through with a run here in the seventh inning. Let's see if Jason Horton RBI now. Second for Anthony Rizzo. Wisdom will almost certainly stay in to play first base. Well, the Reds, you think about Cincinnati's offseason, they lost their ace, Trevor Bauer, and their closer. That's that's a big uh, that's a big transitional offseason. Yeah, a couple of big holes to fill. Now the rotation still should be pretty competitive with the Castillo and Gray at the top of the rotation. Tyler Malley, a lot of people expect big things from him this year. Wonder how many more good years Joey Votto has. I think Joey's going to be about 37 or 38 this season. Now the 2 2. They were pulling the ground ball to the right side. This is going to be out number three. He's in big strikeout numbers. I think that's 36%. Adam with a chance to save a ball game here in the Cactus League. And the eighth inning gets underway with a high fastball. It's one and oh. Adam can really spin that four seam fastball. Um, kind of a short arm stroke. A lot of backspin on his four seamer. Tight curveball slider and a change. Fastball velocity 94 ish. Luis Renjifo is the batter. He'll swing and miss in the count one and one. R E N G I F O Renjifo. He's kind of bundled up like it's a, a game in mid October. Beautiful sunny day here in Arizona. Wind not much of a factor. Fans just kind of basking on the grassy hillsides out beyond the outfield barriers. Red Hefo strikes out swinging on a wicked slider and it's out number one. <laughs> Yeah, bottom dropped out of that one. Adam previously to joining the Cubs pitched in the big leagues with Kansas City, Toronto. Her ball drops in for a strike. 
Scott Shebler. Former Cincinnati Red waiting. Good sinking fastball. He's, he's throwing some very yeah, he's got tough good stuff. pitches. He has good stuff. Command has been a little bit of a problem for Jason, but uh, stuff wise, no questions there. Climbing a ladder. High fastball fouled away. The native of Kansas. Blue Valley Northwest High School in Kansas. But Shebler has really fallen on hard times the last couple of years. First came up with the Reds. Looked like he was going to settle in there and have a nice long run in Cincinnati. There's too many strikeouts. One away eighth inning Cubs lead by a run a seventh inning opposite field single by Anthony Rizzo driving in the game's only run. Her ball in the dust and the count now one and two. Cubs will play the White Sox tomorrow a day off Tuesday J.D. and I will have the game Wednesday night. Against the San Diego Padres starts at eight o'clock central time. Yeah. Check swing did he go. Yes sir that's strike three. That's sharp breaking ball. Two down. First baseman. Go. Austin. Angels down to their last chance. First pitch missing a little bit wide. Goslin made the error that made the run unearned in that seventh inning. Another good pitch by Adam a blazing fastball. Yeah with that short arm stroke that he has that ball gets on you in a hurry. The one one right in on the hands a swing and a miss. I was strike the ball out. He just couldn't catch up with that one. Angels down to their last strike. <laughs> strike three call. Jason Adams strikes out the side. League games. We are now being told that the Angels will indeed bat in the top of the ninth inning. Here's a pitch low and outside from Myers. This will be Myers' second year with the Angels. You may remember him with St. Louis. Part of the previous three seasons. This one is outside. Go ahead. I just say can't put the blame on him for the uh, Angels bullpen woes last year. He was good. 2.10 ERA. Chase Strumpf, the hitter here for the Cubs. And the 2-1. And now it's three and one. Thinking of the Cardinals, the Cubs will not play the Cardinals until the 21st of May. And that is in St. Louis, their first games at Wrigley against the Redbirds in a series beginning on June 11. Swinging strike three. Pretty good fastball from Myers. See more and more of this, the elevated fastball. 
chase pitch tough pitch to get on top of. Nick Martini batting. Cubs lead by a run here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Nick from Crystal Lake Prairie Ridge High School. I think they won a state championship his senior year. Grew up a Cub fan. JD, I know you grew up in upstate New York. Who was your team as a kid? Who did you follow? Well, we, you know, we, it was the Yankees and the Mets are on television. Uh, the Expos we would get on radio, and then the Yankees. The first team I probably ever rooted for was the Cardinals because of the 1968 World Series, because I had some neighbors who were from Michigan and they're big Tiger fans. So I'm, just, I'm kind of a contrarian, so I just. Okay, I'll pick the Cardinals. You know, when you're eight, you know, you don't think about it too hard. <laughs> Martini pulls one high in the air, deep right field, down the line, in the corner, and this ball is going to go foul. And the distance, but he pulled it too much. Are you a Giants fan, Pat? Giants fan, sure. Yeah. Sure that. Giants of my youth were Willie Mays and Orlando Cepeda and Willie McCovey, and Juan Marichal, Gaylord Perry, all kinds of Hall of Famers. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, I said, if you saw a Cubs Giants doubleheader in about 1966, you could have seen nine future Hall of Famers in one day. The five that I just mentioned for the Giants and then for the Cubs, you could have had Fergie Jenkins pitch one half of the doubleheader. Hardy Banks, Ron Santo, Billy Williams. It was fun to watch baseball. That's that some time. star power, yeah. But then the Braves would bring in Henry Aaron and Roberto Clemente would play for the Pirates. We would see them all the time. Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale, they were the villains. Swinging a bouncer toward first should be routine and it is and that's out number two. Myers gets the first two Cubs here in the eighth inning. Cubs lead one to nothing. When the expansion expo started playing in 1969 I grew up about an hour and a half from there so we'd go up to the local Little League a couple bus trips a year my dad we you know, pick a couple of games and my brother and dad and I would go up. We'd go see Aaron. Um, you know the, the the visiting team was more of the draw than the Expos back then. Although mm -hmm. you know we got hooked into Mac Jones and Coco LeBoy and sure <laughs> Bob Bailey. Was, yeah, Bob Bailey. Rusty Staub was there mm -hmm. at some point, mm -hmm. right? The Grand Orange. Oh, oh. Pulled foul deep to right, back out of play. Jose Lobatone, one of the backup catchers in camp, trying to make this Cubs team. Cubs still have a lot of roster moves, JD, to make. Uh, their roster at this point standing at 49. You got to get down to 26 in just over two weeks. So that's 23 more bodies that have to be moved. Yeah, there's still a lot of non roster invite invitees in camp. Uh, Lobatone being one of them. Figure he'd be on the outside looking in as long as Austin Romine is healthy. Oh. Lifted to center should be playable. And the Cubs go very quietly in this eighth inning. We go to the ninth. Cubs one, Angels nothing. Here. Handful of appearances the year before. First to, came to the big leagues in 2018. 23 career appearances at the big league level for James. 0 and 2 with a 450 ERA. 
First pitch, ninth inning, fouled away. You can rush it up there. Average fastball velocity for Norwood right around 97 miles per hour. A swing and miss splitter. And we'll sprinkle in a few sliders. Jose Rojas wearing number 80 on the back of his Angels uniform. You don't see a lot of big league ball players wearing number 80. Only in spring training. Well, I shouldn't say only, but. We saw an 88 last year during the regular year. What team? Oh, uh, escapes me now. 88. Hits have been hard to come by today. The only run was unearned. Anthony Rizzo picking up his fifth run batted in of the Cactus League. And here is ball four up and away from Norwood. And Rojas reaches. Both teams with uh, almost full scale substitutions by this hour. Norwich story similar to Dylan Maples big arm really good stuff Just struggles with command. Franklin Barreto at the plate. Taylor Ward steps in. Ward batting for the first time today. He takes upstairs. When we talk about the casualness of spring training, that would be for fans and a lot of people who are in the game, but not for the guys trying to make the team. This is not a relaxing moment for James Norwood at all, I wouldn't think. The 2 0. Lifted to right. Pretty well hit, but it is playable, and that's going to be out number one. Miller made the catch. He got just enough inside on him, JD, it looked like. Yeah, a good late action on that fastball. Moving in towards the hands. It's a good look there, the two seam action. Marsh at the plate. Brandon Marsh waiting for James Norwood. Tying run at first. Marsh fouls it away. Hair, beard, red jersey. I think Jason Worth. Mm, good call. One of their top prospects. He's had some injury issues. Runner being held at first. That's Rojas. Cubs clinging to a one nothing lead here in the top of the ninth inning with one down. And the one one by Norwood. Good fastball swung on a miss. Movement on that one. James with a uh, tough act to follow after Jason Adams one two three three strikeout performance. That's worthy of a first star selection here this afternoon. Slapped foul off to the left out of play. Mm -hmm. 
A stretch for the one two. Swing and they miss strike three. We reached back for a little something extra on that one. You're going to see a lot of it, a lot of this this year. Not a lot of strikeouts early. The Cubs starting rotation figures to be more of a ground ball pitch to contact group. But still plenty of big arms available out of the bullpen to get swing and miss. Exactly what we've seen here today. Angels down to their last chance. I want to thank our crew Mike Leary our producer and all the gang. And we thank you for watching today's game right here on Marquee Sports Network. Here is a drive into right center in the gap trouble that ball is going to be in the alley all the way to the wall. This could tie the game racing toward home is Rojas and it's all tied at one. The Angels down to their last chance and a run scoring triple has tied the game at one. He went with the slider. He, he likes that split finger pitch to left handed hitters. This time tried the slider and just didn't do a whole lot. A bit of a cement mixer. Right great out over the heart of the plate. So the ball game is back to even. And a blazing fastball is in there for a strike. Jack Kruger had a single his only time up earlier today. If you have not been paying attention to spring training baseball this year there's a rule that a manager can end an inning if his pitcher gets to 20 pitches and they don't want to overextend him. It'd be funny if <laughs> James got to 20 and Rossi looked over at Joe and said we're done. <laughs> the guy at third. Yeah the man on third. <laughs> He's at 18 right now. The tying run is in. Two down, top of the ninth inning. Some of the shadows now appearing on the left side of the diamond. Fastball up and away. Beautiful Sloan Park. Downtown Mesa, Arizona. A swing and a miss, strike three, and that will end the inning. And that'll do it. We are being told the ball game is over. It ends in a one-to-one -one tie. For our entire crew, for JD, it's Pat Hughes saying thanks for watching. Play at home trivia is next with Chris Myers. Final score: Cubs one, Angels one. Next game Wednesday night, eight o'clock, as the Cubs take.